The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Financial and News Network's uh, 10 o'clock show. We just had the uh, 10 o'clock update. Now we're at 10.06 and I want you to see what happened with the market. Yeah, this is what we were anticipating. Um, in this particular 10.20 to 11, uh, I'd even say 12.10 time frame, that's kind of where you would expect uh, something to happen. Today is a very unusual uh, uh, session. Let me just show you something very interesting. Look at this. A five-point range in the uh, futures, in the S&P futures from six, about just after six o'clock yesterday, from the 4704, 740, 7, uh, 4705 area down to the 4700. I mean, a four, five-point range. For the for 14 hours, and then all of a sudden at 8:30 with the with the uh, with the economic news, you get a little pop up, and what does it do? It goes back into the rectangle. This is that whole thing about I, I'll be doing a little bit of this. Just I, I'll be touching in different areas as I'm talking about the different sectors on a Wednesday week when I do my webinar for subscribers. Um, and one of the reasons why it should be really interesting is this is a, right now, as we're speaking, this is the inflection point. And as we go from today into a week from today, Wednesday a week, we will see just a ton of things. We're going to see how the, um, look at this, when you're in a waiting game, that five point range for 14, 14 15 hours, that's, that just says, <laughs> We've had a spectacular move. Now we're, now we're holding, and we're just going sideways waiting. We're in the waiting game right now. So the Dow's down 14, the S&P's up 4, and you can see it right here. There was a little pop-up, and it gave it back. And now in the 10-minute uh, chart, 46.93 is the 200-period uh, exponential moving average. Key support was the support at 9 o'clock yesterday before it pull, pulled back. And then it had a spectacular, you know, I'm – I'm getting so close to being able to define um, the parameters for a two-click session, whether it's up or whether it's down. It doesn't mean to say you're going to get it right. It just says these are the parameters. And if you if you are fortunate enough to have all these things fall, fall in place, and they're very simple, by the time you get about 10, 11 bars, 10-minute bars, so that's about an hour maybe an hour or so, but it's actually usually even less in place. Look, you can get a two-click session where you cross over positive right at 11 o'clock at about 46.84. In the, this is the e-mini. It could be anything that you're trading. And it never went negative until last night at about 10 o'clock. I suddenly saw, oh, huh, isn't that interesting? Now it's gone negative at 4,700, 4,701. Um, and it was just the two-click trade. And now what we've got is there a potential today of a two-click trade to the downside. So uh, 4709.25. And all you do is you have to monitor certain things. And uh, it could work. It doesn't have to. If it does work, it's, it, you know by within, with actually within about an hour or so, this is really a potential where I can do nothing other than wait for later in the day. On the downside, because of the kind of market action we've had now, and I think it's going to change very soon uh, in the shorter term, um, it's all mostly been on the upside. And you've had at least every week you've had maybe three, but definitely two really big moves that were two-click moves. And we had one on the downside the other day. Now we've had at least uh, uh, since last Friday, I think it was, uh, you've been reversing uh, intraday trends a little bit. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so I'm saying to you, just a kind of a sideways move today as we wait for the Fed. Why is this important? Now let me go through all these different things. First of all, I need to just go over here. Okay. First of all, let's just start over again. Here we go. The Dow. 
Because the Dow on a weekly basis took out the 35,679 high of August, uh, August the 1st, that was the high then, we pulled back. There are many signs here with the stochastic at 98% in the weekly chart. I'm saying the daily chart can still have a couple of little dips and all that, but the weekly chart is saying at 98%, and I don't, can't say it's flat, it's only just kind of got there, um, and the MACD is still expanding. That's the histogram. Here's the weekly chart, the histogram expanding. The nine period way over the 14, the price way over the nine, if this is a leg A, and there are so many signs that say this is really not an F, which says you can pull back, they make a G, and then you can alternate count. Just everything so far looks like the weekly chart of the Dow, I'll go through the others, has made a new leg A to the upside. Now, that's quite remarkable. We are at 36,568, 36,952 is the all-time high. We're a whisker away from hitting it. But what happens in the cup formation, especially when it turns out to be a little bit more like a rectangle that then starts to make high highs and higher lows, says that you can get to just under, right on, or just above the previous high in this cup, i.e. extended um, lopsided, uh, a rectangle formation with a lopsided cup, says that you can get to just under, right on, or just above the previous high. And that would be your target. And then you've got to be careful of a pullback. And that pullback has to be monitored in certain ways. But so far, all the technicals in the monthly are very positive. Now, what I had said, I was talking to Tom about this yesterday when he interviewed me. Let's just say the monthly chart um, for December has a high that for some reason is just not taken out in January. Well, that still leaves you at the best a leg D. So that becomes a peak C, even if it's just one point lower, it becomes a peak C. Leg D means that you have to wait for all of February to start your leg D. So and then to get a peak D, because D's can last a long time, for February, you have to wait for the downturn. That could be March. So that either way, the monthly charts say we've still got more to go. Yes, when you make double tops and you fail to get above the double top, that's something to monitor. It'll be close enough to say, oh, it's a possibility. But that weekly chart, that will become a peak F. And then you get a G or you get an alternate count, whatever it is. I'm calling it a potential A. So here we are. So that says nearest we can do it in the weekly chart is late January to get a D. Uh, but that still makes it a leg C in the, in the monthly chart of the Dow. Yeah, it could be an alternate count. But I have to say this really looks like a new move. So I'm just saying so far looking out, I want to go through each one. Let's just do this S&P real quickly. Look, S&P. <clears throat> Um, up five today at 1648. This uh, has the look of an A only because we got to a G. There's never an H. And there is an instant restart, but we actually took out the low of the instant restart low. That's from that peak D. It's getting a little complicated. This should be for Friday where I do more chapter notations. The 41.0398 was the low, uh, the last low, and 41.0378. Um, it took it out by 20 cents in October. That kind of negates it. I'll be back. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's Secret Science of Market Tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Hi, folks. So just in, in essence, let me just save time. Uh, maybe I'll come back to it. I was, I was, uh, Tom asked me about the instant restart. Well, the instant restart here was a potential instant restart. That means this would be a GSC, but that gets negated because we went underneath that trough that formed the peak D before two bars later breaking out to the upside in the S&P. So there's a lot of evidence that says right now, there's no reason why we can't think of this as a brand new leg A. Uh, it could be G says C, that means that we could call this a D, so it says D, be a little careful, A says buy every single dip. I'm in the camp right now that says, I'm going with it. This is very positive. Now, another thing I'm going to mention real quickly, since I don't want to go through them all, I've got a whole bunch of questions that I need to get to, is that that 408.71 level, and I can't believe I keep looking at this and say it was right there. Why weren't you observant of all the work you did? And that had me with a chapter with inside wedge target green dash sort of support and resistance line. In this case, it's a resistance line. I had the 408.71 high of November of uh, 2023, uh, sorry, November the 23rd, the weekly chart in 2022, as a target for, let me click this, just to see where it comes up. Hello, anybody home? Uh-oh. Yeah, the target for, so much going on here. I think it was a target for last week, was it? Yes, uh, I put the X in. A target for last week, so it's a week late, for 408.71. And uh, everything said, except that that pullback over there was strong enough for me to say, yeah, I think we're going to rally, but it's going to take a little bit to cross that nine period to cross <laughs> over a positive, and look what happened with the Qs. It did fabulously. So with that said, this is where you could get a stalling action. We're very close to that, but we haven't broken it. So it's a slightly different chart uh, than the others. This one uh, is in a leg. Uh, it's more likely a B than an F. All right, so that all says the technicals are good enough. That's a, and Now we do that on a weekly chart, and we just do this for the one, next one, IWM. Um, this is just stuck. It's starting to improve. Look, the technicals are improving, but the price really is stuck at this 200 period exponential moving average in the rectangle. This 200 period moving average now it acts like a midpoint. This has been steady all the way through. It's just fractionally turning up, and the and it's for the this week 
Last week it started, and this week it's falling through with the nine period moving average crossing positive. So if there is, and this is what I'm going to be talking to uh, coming up in my webinar a week from today, are we going to be looking at uh, areas like IWM? If there's going to be, and a lot of people are talking about this, that we're going to make an all-time high coming up this first quarter somewhere and all that, and then it is over. And a lot of people don't just say it's over for a while. They're talking about it something really serious they're doing multi-year so now i need to do work that says gee I, i've heard that now it's in my head but w can you refute that do you agree with it you don't have to change your mind about anything but look at the evidence to see what side you know how relevant it is so that says if this is going to be what i think is going to be a a, a very choppy higher highs and mostly higher lows period that we're looking at because I think a chunk of the work has just been done and now we're looking at residual flows going into January and that just says to me stocks like Shopify that hit 176 in November plunging down to 23 if they are they done are they never going back to all-time highs Shopify customized online store platforms well even if it went just halfway from to the 100 level, 72, that's almost a 50% gain. Uh, it's just an area that we need to look at as well as uh, the the top, the, seven, the Amazon, you know, the Amazons, et cetera, the Magnificent Seven. So let's just go through this quickly. Here we go. I wanted to show you gold. It's just in a waiting uh, situation right now. The nine period moving average did turn south, S for south. Um, it turned negative a couple of days ago, but look how it's sitting on the 200 period moving average. It hasn't broken down yet, but that Chapel Wave Roman candle said that you've got to be careful because it sometimes is a very serious sell signal. I don't know if that's the case yet, and I'm trying to put it together because geopolitically, uh, it had its big move to the upside and it seems to me from what I've heard and uh, little snippets here and there that gold is not acting the way it would with Mideast tension like as, as, it, as it was. I don't think it's quite the same tension. It's a different kind of tension. And maybe that's why gold's slipping. And that's why you can see silver, which followed gold and led gold and then tanked, is in the tanking mode right now. It says this is ugly. And that just says to me, that whole area at this particular point is in abeyance. I don't care what the Fed says today. I need the evidence that gold is going to move up about 35 to $40 over the next two, two sessions or three sessions. Say, I'm back. It hasn't said that. It hasn't done it yet. So let's just go on with this particular sector because there's a ton I want to look at. High-grade copper. I'll have to quickly look around to see. Yeah, there's the questions that are coming. That's what I'm going to deal with. Dollar, etc. We're getting there. And on the other side... Yeah, we got that as well. All right. So high grade copper is just kind of stuck. And that goes together with wood. The, I put them together. Dr. Copper is a international uh, uh, business. It's really building activity. Uh, and it's, it's just kind of stuck right now. And wood is the eye shares of the broker, uh, the eye shares of the timber and forestry ETF. Also kind of stuck. Had very, both of them had nice rallies off the low 69 to 78. That's nine points. It's a 10. Uh, 12, 13% gain. And now look at the weekly chart improving, but the monthly chart says, wow, that needs a lot to go. So I need to finish this up. Let me just do this. The bonds, bonds, the 200 period moving average of 121.14. That's going to be key for me. We keep failing under it. The closer you get to it, the more it becomes a magnet and just grabs the price. It hasn't done that yet. So I'm watching this because the leg A in the uh, weekly chart. And you can see the monthly chart did a beautiful symmetry, left side, right side, price, time match. It went to the exact month, three months ago at the 109 area. And now it's up at 119, 10 points. I mean, in bonds, that's look at how much it fell. So bonds are just saying to me that it's we've got to monitor both. So let me do this right now, the TBT. TBT is the ultra short that is basically looking at the yields. And you see it made a peak E in the monthly chart, very sharp pullback. Weekly chart is in a sell mode. This is the TBT, ultra short human 20-year T-bond ETF. And the um, symmetry 
went right to the 32 area five sessions ago, bounced, and now it's not doing very much. It's at 33.43. It's down 36 cents. So that says just quickly go to the TNX. The TNX is the TNX. TNX dot X. Don't forget the dot X. Um, is pulling back sharp. It went from 49.97 October the 23rd at a peak D. This is a fantastic example of the instant restart that goes to a G slash C, and the technicals are still strong, so expect you're going to get that little pop to go to a D, and lo and behold, it does it, and that's where you've got to be careful. G slash C, D at 49.97 on the 23rd of October. Boom, down to the 200 period moving average, trying to bounce, but not a very big bounce. And that just says to me that the, uh, the temp wave technique that I use, a dark use cloud cover, which needs higher yields, and a higher dollar uh, to start at least a move that says anything uh, out there is going to affect the market. We haven't got that. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. <laughs> Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So the importance of different things. That, look, the 200-period moving average, look how important it's been. It's stuck 
right there, the price of the uh, E-mini. Uh, it broke below it, came back, and now it's just glued to this orange line right here, the 200 period moving average for the last uh, 25 minutes. Almost every bar, not now, but almost every bar except the last two have, have touched it. Interesting. And look at the trading band. You remember we spoke about this narrow trading band? So you've, the patterns are really important. The pattern was that nothing was happening last night. Then there was a pop to the upside. And the rule of thumb in the rect long rectangle is that if you break to the upside, then take out the midpoint of that rectangle, there's a good chance that you're going to then test and probably take out the, the low. And then you got to see, do you have the strength to go back and then test the midpoint again? Well, that's what it's done. And that's really telling you we're just in a waiting game right now, waiting for the Fed to speak before we do something maybe different. So let's go back. Now we're going to look at, uh, I think I covered all the things I need to. Yes. So here we go. So within the context of uh, the, the leading indicator, I always think that the crude oil, the, uh, sorry, someone uh, had crude oil in the, in the den. Um, yeah, crude oil has been very weak. Uh, in, in context of leading indicators, the SMHs have just been there on the upside and on the downside, then back on the upside. So now I wanted to show you this. Look, the SMHs, this is the daily chart, leg D, made a peak C1, C2. I don't think this is a brand new A, and I don't have to talk about it. Right? It's a D. So this is the MACD is good. Stochastic's flat at 80. I just got to 85%. The 9's over the 14, price is over the, uh, the 9. And the weekly chart is probably more like a B than an alternate count. I always have to have that. A question came in, uh, well, what is alternate count? It's like you have an excuse. I don't, I'm, over the years, I've learned that if you don't have a what if I'm wrong, it proves, you're, it, it proves that you should have been thinking about that. And my thing here is, this should be a B, <clears throat> but there's a chance you've got just an extension of the previous peak so that is just an E slash A, F slash B, alternate count. Why? Because um, at the point that it got to that first peak right there, the technicals were just improving. Even now, the MACD is not fantastic. It is strong, but this is not as good as it was when it went to the D. The stochastic has had a very quick move, and now it's flat at 89%. That is good, and that says, hey, this is really strong. And that makes the SMH support at 158 to 155, really important over the next two weeks, right? Now, this is what I wanted to show you. So you've got that. You've got NVIDIA. <clears throat> and I know that uh, we have a couple of people always saying, ah, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, uh, it's done, it's finished. <laughs> um, you know, really good companies tend to stay in that position until they do something terribly wrong. So here is NVIDIA off its uh, all-time high that it made just recently at 505.48. That's November the 20th. It pulled back to the 450s, uh, and now it's trading at 483. A very quick peak A, one bar rest, one bar up for leg B, peak B, one bar rest, and then two bars later in sauce leg C. We're in that right now. The MACD hasn't turned positive yet. The stochastic is still under four, at 42%, way under 80%. Um, the on-balance form is just okay. And the nine-period moving average today is the chance that it goes, uh, the day's young. We'll see if we can cross green. But, yes, I believe that NVIDIA is going to have a little bit of a tough time here. Uh, it just uh, off the spectacular move that it's had from the 200-period moving average back in January of 2023, in the one uh, under 150, screaming to the huh, 150 to 550, 505, I would say that it deserves a little bit of a breather. And this is the sideways action that we see in the weekly chart. But wait a minute, it hit the inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart, got repelled four times from that, and is still trying to get back there. And I have no choice but to call that a leg B in the monthly chart. That is really positive. It means you can't make a peak D until you get to the first quarter of uh, 2024. Ha, advanced micro devices. Advanced micro devices trading right now. Oh, man, it's down 15 cents at 137.46. It's had a spectacular move. All time high, 164.46, November of 2021. Tumbles down to the 50s. 
screams out peak A, leg B, peak B, leg C, peak C, and then leg D. Just a couple of days ago, the last three days took it to a higher high than 132.83, the peak F of um, a peak F of uh, May, I think it was. And what happened was it pulled back, and now I'm calling this a leg A. That on balance volume says, yeah, it might be an A, but don't be prepared that it could have a little bit of a turn down, but there could in fact be an alternate count. Now I need to. I need to explain what that means. It means at that peak F, the starting point was right down here at about 52 in October. Well, the last move down stalled in the 90s. So that's still active for the letters that we've got. And the letter goes to a peak F, maybe it's an F slash B, and now you've gone to a C. I don't like to do that. I like to say, all the technicals are really strong here. This should, in fact, be the starting point. But at this level to say, is this still just a brand new A? This is like the Dow, brand new A. That's really positive for the first quarter of 2024. So I'm leaving it that to say advanced micro devices has become uh, a leader in the shorter term because evidently they got the chip they could challenge NVIDIA. But if you go through MU, look, Micron, um, the old time I was 98. It's in a really nice move here at 78. Uh, this is leg A, leg B, and uh, we're going to see what happens here in the daily. And the uh, same thing in the weekly chart. Look, higher highs and higher lows, and the monthly chart is improving. You've got uh, AMAT, Applied Materials. Uh, leg D right now as we speak, got right to the Chevrolet Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, alternate count. And a leg D in the monthly all-time high is 167.06. And the last high was right, yeah, we, we, we're right there at 157. So we're uh, 10 points away from that. So, and then someone said in the den, um, chips are, are everywhere. And my, my contention has always been that for the whole 1900s, that's from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, right into the year 2020, into our, where we are right now, 2023. Oil has been pervasive. It, it was the generator of incredible economic strength throughout the world. Um, yes, it created problems, but I think it solved a lot more problems than it created. But you've been usurped by something else that is energy, and that is the energy of the chipset. And chips are the new oil of the 21st century. It's here to stay. It's really important. We'll be back and we'll try to finish up the semiconductors when I return. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right. so we're back and look at that rank thing. I just got it there. It's a 10 minute ESH watch contract just stuck there, going towards the top end of the level. And look at that 200 period moving average. It's been like a little trampoline bounce, 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 keeps coming back, keeps touching it at 4703. All right, so let's just get back to this. Uh, look at Intel. So, in other words, chips on almost anything that's needed to for, for to generate some kind of energy to be able to move something, right, or to change something. And it's there, it's pervasive. So that's really important. So these, this is why this is an area that I, that I follow and that I always say where the semis go, the general market goes. Uh, this one was where it was early, it got to all-time highs, and then it pulled back. So Intel, which is, did everything wrong, everything wrong. I remember later uh, uh, Dave White saying to us, uh, I think Intel's finally got a product that they can, that is different. To any, every time they say this is new, it wasn't new. This one, he said, I think is new. And you can see that in the chart. Well, if we're in a big bull market here, uh, not knowing exactly where it goes to, although I must say, well, I don't see any, human nature is human nature. We will get to a point where everyone is talking stocks at some point in the future. I'm not telling you where the future is uh, and where the brokerage companies are just, rising to the moon and that everyone is trading and they're trading everywhere they go everywhere they go even on the road accidents happening because people are trading we haven't got to that hysterical level yet we're not even close i don't even know how it could work under these conditions that we've got uh, both economically but the, the 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 way people are uh, you know treat one another this is just unbelievable um how you can even think we could be uh, in some kind of a bull market you know what Bull markets don't care. They are their own uh, energy source, which is us, of course. And we don't know where it is, but it's there. And it's going to be there at some point where it isn't. This is, I would say, this is just nothing to what we should see in the future. Uh, and I don't know where the future is. It could be this coming, coming quarter. It could be later in the year. And it's coming up for an election year. A lot of things are going on. So now let's just look at the price. And the price is the only thing I want to judge things by. And the price of Intel says, I finally got a decent product. I'm, I'm not doing great. I mean, my high was back at 70 in 2020 and double topped in 2021. I plunged down to the 25 level. But look, I'm making higher highs and higher lows. That's all I'm interested in. So there could be a, the 200-period moving average in the weekly chart is at 40, uh, what is that, 41? Yeah, 41. I could go below that. It could go to the, it's at 44. It could go to the 39 to the 35 area. That would be good support. Um, but each one of these is showing that they have something quite unique in the charts. Uh, let's go to what was the one that I always look at, Marvell. Um, Marvell, right, 200 period moving average. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a really great company in the, uh, uh, with data centers, auto, it's a, it has the kind of chips that are needed in automobiles, communications, Marvell technology. 93 was the high back in December of 2021. 
tumbles down to the uh, 34, then it pops up to a double. It goes to uh, 68, <clears throat> comes back to the 200 period moving average. So something says that there's selectivity that's also very important in this particular move. So I don't want to go through them all LR. CX, is that right? Lamb, Re yep, Lamb Research. I remember symbols, I don't always remember the name. Lamb Research, all time high as we speak, or yesterday it was an all time high, or very close to the all time high, little double topping in leg D in the monthly. Is this only a leg B in the weekly chart? A peak F possible in the daily? So we're looking at something that says that's a sector that's really been doing well. It, 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 didn't do well for a long time, then it, it held very nicely. Let's just go back to what we're talking about, the SMHs. So a question came in, <clears throat> SMHs, and what about the SOXL? SOXL is the three times long, the semiconductors, and that's had a spectacular move from the 21 area. It's at 27 right now, just about less than two weeks ago, uh, leg E. So this is what I'm saying. If you, I would not go into the three times long right here, even if the Fed maker says something today that, oh, says, oh my God, now we're going, you know, it's a brand new move to the upside. Um, I would rather play it with an option if that's what you want to do. But at this particular point, I would not be surprised if by early next week, we're seeing some kind of a consolidation. These are famous last words, right? Some kind of consolidation at the th direction daily semi bull three times, which I like very much. We've had it before. We've also had the shorts. Lately, we just had the shorts of a brief period uh, as almost insurance because it was acting so badly over there. And then, bam, it moved to the outside. We're out of those. <clears throat> so what we're looking at is in the long term, the direction says, Shares say that they go should go to a leg C above 28.75. So on a very short-term basis, to buy it right here, yes, the stochastic is just up to 89%. That on-balance volume is overbought, but the 9 is um, nine is way over the 14. Price is way over the 9. Everything's very positive, but it, it's a risk for three times long. I would rather say if you're interested in the SMHs, you've missed a big move in the SMHs, but if you like them, because you're thinking that's part of the economy that yeah, they had that huge funding that was given to them. I think it was it New Hampshire that has a big uh, fab or at least a facility. I don't remember now what I heard other than the word no, new, the, the words New Hampshire. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, so if you're interested, then don't. I don't. I don't know if I'd do anything more than nibble at the SMHs at 168. But I would plan this entire spike that you saw that went from 156 right here on the 4th of December of 156.56. So you're at 168. That's 30 points. That's like a 10% risk. I would do this. I, if you're ready, this is, I want to get into the SMH, as someone might be saying. And if that's the case, it's, it's tough to get into it at all-time highs as we speak. But stocks and indexes that make all-time highs tend to come back when they might get out of favor briefly. But they're, they're right there. Once they've done it, they kind of stay in that for until the market changes, the huge market change in direction. So I would just nibble here at 168.90. If you're saying to yourself, hey, this is absolutely, I'm buying the top tick. You've got to think that. You, know, you might not be, but that's what you've got to think. But then you have to plan entry points. And my plan would be, to in the full the gap is where that's kind of where I would put my first position, and then I'd have a second position. Uh, so that's at 160 between 163 and 162, and then another position I'd have just above this low right here, uh, 156.56. Because this one, I I don't mind doing it twice, but I'd like to have a stop in place there. So you've started a little nibble, a first position. Second, but I would even be thinking third position. If this is what I'm saying to the people who say, this is an area I love and I want to be, or you've got some and you want to add, because in 2024, this should be really acting even better. That's the way I would look at it. Now, uh, on the neg negative side, says uh, two things. One is either you, you get in now a little bit nibble, and it just keeps going up until it makes a major top in the daily chart, maybe even the weekly, and then pulls back about three or four weeks and you just have to say, oh, I just lost my little profit. 
what did I, I you know, what am I going to do next? So that's the one side. And the other is it goes way down to the 155, 154 area. Just do one thing at a time. Just a little bit. I'll be back. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Oh. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So in this last segment, we just do a couple. I just want to show you the type of thing that I'll be doing as well uh, in the webinar. I'll be talking about these left side, right side price time match. We try to find bar symmetry, but we just did that in the one minute chart. Oops, if I can find, there it is. In the one minute chart from that peak, uh, right there, the Doji Candle Peak F, it pulls back, makes an um, arch formation, makes a little H to M pattern. I chose this particular candle right here as the midpoint. And then you've got the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. So it went to peak C1 and a C2. That acts like a D because it just missed by a quarter of a point making that D. And now we're starting to pull back. You see if it crosses negative, and that means you can go back to the 4703, 200-period exponential moving average in the one-minute chart. doesn't matter if it's a one-minute chart or whatever. So this is what I'm looking at. For the Fed, um, I, 
It's how the market reacts to whatever the Fed says. Now, the, the, the Fed is a charter, so it isn't so much uh, how the market wants to interpret it, it's how the market reacts. So I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. If after, I'm going to make it all the way through to quarter to three or three o'clock. If the market is up plus 80 or more, it says status quo, everything's the same. We're going to make, we're going to continue to rally some. And probably be next week that we start to see some kind of a, a, a deterioration in the technical with some kind of a pullback. And that pullback, I don't know how deep it will be. That's the measure at the end next few day. If in fact it's not right and at, uh, it's minus 30, look out, minus 40, look out for the close. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve.